Hello, it's the Sinister Gampino here with a new video. In this video, I want me to talk about the start of my RC Bandito Time Trial Guide series, where I'm going to try to do my personal best that I can in order to help people out with the RC Bandito Time Trials between the 10 of them in the game. So for those who don't know, this first event week this is the first event week where the time trial repeated so basically it means there's 10 time trials in the game starting with construction site one and then it ends with like the power station one from like last event week or whatever so i believe it can be said that the power station one is for sure the last time trial who knows if they have intentions to do more rc bandito time trials of the OCs. But I believe the first time around for the normal time trials, the last one was down chill yet, and I'm pretty sure that's still always been the, like, last normal time trial. So it doesn't sound like there's going to be any new time trials, realistically, judging by their track record with the normal time trials. So Power Station will very likely be the last one, so I figured now would be a good time to start doing this series, now that it'll be available again. So of course this one will be the first time trial in construction site one. And you may be asking, why am I doing the RC Bandito race on this video? Well, because there's some pretty important stuff I feel like would make for a like good like long intro rather than like for every specific time trial. Because I definitely don't think these things are worth saying for every single video. Because pretty much these 8 things that I'm about to mention will pretty much be good to do for any time trial. Of course I'll focus on like general tips for like the rest of the time trials on their like own videos. So this might be the only video in this series that will be much longer than the rest. The rest of them might, of course, just have like an initial run of the time trial, or it might even have like a couple or so. And also, I figured it would be boring seeing the same trial, time trial like a few times on the video as well. So, I thought of 8 general tips for every time trial, and I'll start talking about them now. So the first one I thought of is that there's no speed boost on the go. You know how on like normal like races, like stunt races, transform races, and those kinds of races and stuff like that, you can do the accelerator on go and you'll get a speed boost. That's not the case for time trials in general, I think, or at least the RC Bandito time trials. By the way, these time trials I feel are a lot more like linear and deal with a lot less like variables. So I will say right now that the RC Bandito time trials, in my personal opinion, are a lot more worth doing than the regular time trials. But still, I don't think it really justifies the amount of money you get. I think it's still not that worth it, in my opinion, for the amount of money you get, even though they doubled the pay for time trials, like, in general, with the latest DLC. Of course, being a Diamond Casino and Resort DLC. That wasn't part of my general tip, I didn't actually think of saying that it still deals with a lot less variables and stuff like that. That's not really much of a tip. I just thought I would say these RC Bandito time trials, in my opinion, are definitely a lot easier than the regular ones because you're dealing with a lot less variables since with normal time trials, of course, you can use like numerous numerous different vehicles and depending on the time trial certain ones may be better than other vehicles kind of depends of course also not to mention in normal time trials you can no longer use vehicles with boost of course that's going to be more of a discussion if i ever do a t normal time trial guide series however i don't have that one planned for a long while i feel i just want to get this one out because i kind of want some sort of like major content with the latest dlc to be honest, I'm kind of focusing on stuff from like day one of the game since it's kind of overshadowed by new stuff and I want to give day one of the game a lot of like new focus, hence my contact mission content series and stuff like that. But yeah, regardless, I'll go on to the second general thing now is using the jump can be helpful in straightaways. 
Now what do I mean by that? Now I believe on this race here that Steven did a race I'm doing for this long introduction sequence before going to the actual time trial. There was at least a single lap. I believe I was using the jump boost and I actually think I ended up saving a second by using the jump in like multiple straightaways. <laughs> by the way, if you want to test that kind of thing out, I recommend the one that's pretty reminiscent to the criminal records race from day one of the game. There's RC Bandito race that's pretty similar to the criminal records race from day one. I think that's a great one to test out. If the jump boost does indeed save you like a second if you use it enough and if you use it strategically. However, I feel like using the jump in straightaways is a little more of an advanced strat, so I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Plus, also, there's not really much like areas, in my opinion, with these time trials, especially with how speedy you have to be with them and how little mistakes you can make where the jump will actually be that beneficial. I believe in this series I've used it a couple times, but aside from that, I didn't really see much usage for it. I believe in particular there was one that took place in a quarry. I did a pretty strategic jump and it actually might have saved me like a couple seconds. So at least for that one it will be pretty helpful for, but as for other ones, I would only do that if you like hit an object for like I don't know, a couple, like, 100 milliseconds or something, then you want to, like, get a little caught up if you still believe that attempt of yours is still worthy of being able to be under part-time. Sorry if that's really confusing to understand, but I'm not too good at describing these things, but I'm trying to do my best to do so, of course. But anyways, for my third general tip I have for these time trials is try to complete them under part-time at night. The reason you'll want to complete these time trials at night, at least under part-time, is because you won't have to deal with pedestrians. Yes, there's actually going to be pedestrians that end up being in your way in these time trials, or at least most of them, if you do them in like the daytime. I believe they start appearing at like 6 a.m. in the game or whatever. Not entirely too sure where they, when they go away, by the way. Just of course rely on when it looks like it's nighttime, for sure if you want to like, be safe with there not being pedestrians in your way. However, I wouldn't really recommend waiting until nighttime if you're going to like only want to attempt these at nighttime. I do recommend doing attempts at daytime as well, because it will probably take you a good bit of attempts of course. since. The more practice you'll get, the better you'll get at it, of course, and I'll go into that a little more later on. But yeah, anyways, for the fourth general tip I have is it was updated to allow for mowing down pedestrians in the latest DLC. So yes, the RC Bandito got buffed in the latest DLC, the Dominic Casino and Resort DLC. And the Arena War DLC, it used to be really terrible at mowing down pedestrians and getting them on their feet. You just have to hit pedestrians really hard. But now it's really simple to mow down pedestrians. Like one small little hit can actually knock one down to their feet now I would imagine. Pretty sure I easily knocked pedestrians down. I don't know if I had a run where pedestrians were in the way that was actually under part-time, but still, it is pretty useful to know that you can run into pedestrians, of course, easier than you could when this vehicle initially came out. I'm guessing Rockstar intentionally buffed it to be able to run into pedestrians and put them down to their feet easier, of course just because of the facts they released the time trials because otherwise if pedestrians were again your way in the time trials and it still worked like in the arena ward you'll see it would probably make the time trial was pretty much impossible if a pedestrian got in your way in such a bad manner of course but yeah going on to the next general tip i have this one is talking about how much you need to do in order to break even 
I'm only going off of the initial price, by the way, to a million five hundred ninety thousand or whatever. And for that, you have to do like fifteen to sixteen time trials to break even for the initial purchase of the vehicle. Because each of these time trials net you around like in the early one hundred thousand dollar range. I believe it can vary between like a hundred one thousand to like a hundred four thousand. Not entirely too sure how that works. It might depend on the race in particular. Not entirely too sure. But yeah. It is typically going to take you like 15 to 16. Considering they all pay a little over 100,000. For the first week of course. That they were going on. The first time trial. Which is the one on this video. Was actually double money RP. That would, that would turn to 14 to 15 for this week to break even on the initial purchase because there was double money on this time trial for the last time it was available like 10 or 11 weeks ago but yeah if you do buy into some customizations which i only recommend like a couple for the um time trials if any really I would say you would need to do each time trial tri twice in order to break even, but yeah, I would say anywhere from 15 to 16 to break even on the initial purchase, and if you buy into like upgrades, I would say you would probably want to do each time trial at least twice if you think it's really important to break even on this vehicle purchase, of course. And then for the sixth general tip I have is don't expect to get under part-time on first try. I know it might be a pretty obvious one not to expect to do it on your first try, of course, to get under part-time, of course, on these RPC being the time trials. If I wanted to put it in there just so maybe people are not as inclined to, like, give up on them, like it. Definitely no going into these, you're most likely not going to get any of them on your first try. Even if you watch my video and very, like, precisely watch all the movements I made that ended up getting me under part-time. That's why I'm going to be giving tips for, like, each individual time trial when I can and if I feel like I can find ways to do so. Because everyone's experience on these time trials is going to be different depending on like how skillful they are at stuff like this. So that's why I'm going to have tips for each individual one, for sure. But yeah, on to the 7th general like tip, of course, I have for RC Bandito time trials is still attempt them during rain. And this kind of goes back to to try to complete the under part time at night. And the reason for that is time and weather seemingly transfers over between the lobbies. So switching the lobbies isn't just magically going to make your game have the, like nighttime when it was initially daytime. So I'm pretty sure the time in the lobby on the like cell phone of your character, of course, and then like the weather transfers over like no matter what lobby you go into. So if you know it can be really quick to go into different lobbies when going invite only, I don't recommend doing that because I definitely don't think it actually does anything for you. I think the time and the weather, no matter what lobby you're in, is basically the same throughout. Not entirely sure how that works, but as far as I understand, that's how like the time and like weather system works when it comes to like switching lobbies. So it's not worth really switching lobbies. To try to get nighttime over daytime and stuff like that. Because I'm pretty positive that's just not how it works, I'm pretty sure. And then into the last general tip I have. I'm not entirely sure actually if it's a customization or not. But I recommend you do off-road tires. I'm not sure if you can have like high end tires and stuff like that on the RC Bandito. I completely forget if you could customize like the wheels like you can like normal vehicles and like the of course the LS customs and right there I believe by the way I got a better lap time when I was using the jump so that proves my point that using the jump can be helpful in straightaways by the way 
But yeah, there is customization for the tires, where you can choose like high-end tires and like off-road tires and stuff like that. Definitely go off-road tires, because a lot of these take place off-road, I feel. And in general in the game, I believe off-road tires is generally the best one to go for in terms of performance, like general performance. Because then you'll be good for basically normal road and off-road, of course. Since no other tires are going to compete off-road. No, that might be another obvious one, but of course I'm trying to make people do the best they can on these time trials, of course. So I might as well put everything I can for general tips. So that's going to be it for general tips for all of the 10 time trials. And now I'll be going into tips for the first time trial. And I may include slow motion if I can figure out how that works on my video editor, of course. Before I start off with this particular guide, just something I thought I should mention quick is you should consider using your previous dirt trails to prevent common mistakes that you may have made in previous runs. But to start off, there's a lowercase n formation and a u formation. Then between the next n formation and that previous u formation, there's a pole there that you should go to the left. N formation there, another u formation there, go to the left of that crane, another n and formation, go to the left of that pole. Next big obstacle in my opinion is kind of a crane, though it's pretty easy to avoid, and just go to the right of it. Then going into the next interior, when you start going left, it kind of goes in a Z formation. However, there's this wood pile here, you go to the left of course, when going up. Then you kind of make a upside down L formation up to the first like walkway. However, this one has like guardrail kind of things, so you shouldn't really fall off of that one. And then be careful of this light wood ramps here. This is the first one, and by the way, just watch for your speed there. Also, be careful of open elevators. And then from here, the walkways start not having guardrails, so if there's any time you're going to slow down, I would definitely recommend slowing down here because you could easily just fall off the construction site. That's probably going to be your biggest mistake if you ever fall off of those. Another wood ramp thing there, or bump, or whatever. Once again, there's more elevator things. And then this next one actually at least has some sort of guardrails, but still do be careful at least when initially going on there from there it might be a lot easier. And then I think the next big like thing to watch out for is the next walkway where you start going like back down. That one might be even more necessary to break forward than the ones where you go up, I would say. And then, I know I'm not really talking about the movements much anymore, because once you get into the construction site, I feel like they're a lot more, like, linear. Of course, you might just kind of want to use the footage, of course, for examples for that. And I'm, guess I'm guessing the next big mistake can happen at another walkway. Yeah, next one here is the walkway, but this one, the guardrails are like very exposed to outside of construction site, so if you fall into any of those, you're probably going to fall back down out of there and you would have to redo the time trial, because just one small mistake can definitely end your run. And the last thing really is to watch out for the last like wooden like bump thing. And then from there you pretty much complete it really easily, and that's finally it for this video. Hope you enjoyed.